Hello everyone, welcome back to the True Missionary Story, Thai Fam, Witch Doctor's Daughter. This is week two. Well, <clears throat> did you know that God loves everybody in the whole world? John 3.16 tells us, can you say it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that was Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God's desire is, that all people might be saved. Even Typhan and her father and her mother that live in Haiti, a little island. Wow, you think how, how could God love a witch doctor that believed in voodoo spirits and magic? Well, Romans 5, 8 says, <clears throat> But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us so much that he died for us even though we're sinners. He loves us and he draws us to him. We found that happening at the end of our lesson last time. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Jeremiah 31, 3b. And that's what's happening right here in this scene where we ended last time. Madame Aresto and Taibam are listening to Victor tell a Bible lesson. And they are excited. Well, Taibam's not. But Taibam remembers that he's the man that brought her, bought her sweet potatoes. So she said she would listen a little. But she starts out with her hands over her ears. Many years ago in another land, Typham heard the words dimly, there was a wicked king that worshipped a false god named Baal. And the prophets of Baal were a lot like witch doctors today, he told them. A prophet named Elijah worshipped the true God. And Elijah said he wanted to have a contest to show which was the true God. They needed to choose Baal or God, Victor said. So a bunch of them went up on top of a big mountain and they built two altars. And Typham watched as Victor put the pictures up on the board and they would stick there. And she wondered, did he have magic too? How did they stick there? She let her fingers slide apart and she began to listen a little too. He said, the men who served Baal killed a bull and put it on an altar. <clears throat> And there were 450 of these prophets, and they were something like witch doctors. They called for their God to send fire to burn the offering. They, all day long they shouted and danced around the altar, and nothing happened. They even cut themselves with knives. Lies, whispered Typham. Then Elijah said it was his turn. He killed a bull and put it on the other altar. And then he had some men dig a trench around the altar and pour four barrels of water over the offering. And they did it three times. So now the firewood was soaked. And then Elijah prayed and he asked God to prove himself. And fire came down from heaven and burned up the offering and the wood and the stones. It even burned up the water that was in the trench. Everyone knew that the God Elijah served was the true and living God. They all bowed down and they cried out, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Wow. Victor said, That is the God that I serve and I worship. He is the true and living God. Lies, lies, Typham clutched her charm in fear. 
Tai Pham saw that her mother was really listening to Victor. Maybe there are some of you here today, he said, who would like to turn away from serving false gods and receive the one true God the Lord Jesus Christ, into your heart and life. If so, you come and talk to me and we will pray together. Madame Arrestle took a step forward. Mama, Mama! Typhan burst out in fear. Madame Arrestle turned and slowly started toward home. I think this victor is right, she said. As soon as they reached home, Tai Pham heard her mother say to the witch doctor, I think Victor's God must be more powerful than your voodoo gods. Whoa, Aresto was not happy with that. He was mad. I'll stop that, Victor. He's not only turned the neighbors against me, but now you. I'll need something special to make a charm against Victor. He looked down in Tai Pham's basket and he pulled out her dress with words, the one she was so happy to get. And he said, I'll use this. And he turned and walked toward his voodoo temple. Tai Pham was so sad. My dress, she gasped. When the witch doctor came back, he held up a rag doll that he had made out of Tai Pham's dress. And he said, see, I have put a curse on Victor. This voodoo doll is Victor and these pins are stuck into his heart. And these two nails will fix the spell and make it hold. And this black thread is a warning that Victor will die. Pam had never heard her father put a death curse on someone before. Whew. The next week, when Madame Arrestal and Tai Pham were at the market, it began to stir up rain. <clears throat> and they were looking around and they needed to go home because it was going to start to rain. And Tai Pham said, Mama, it's going to start raining. And she said, that's okay. At least the dust will settle. She said, but we can't leave yet. We haven't seen Victor. Do you think he's dead? No, she shook her head. I don't think he's dead. He's not afraid of voodoo. Aren't you afraid, Mama, when you don't wear your charm? Typham knew her mother hadn't worn it for more than a week. Madame Arrestal didn't answer. As they left the market, Typham kept looking over her shoulder to try to see if Victor was there, but they didn't see him. Typham and her mother climbed up the winding path to the top of the first mountain, and going down a steep slope, Typham started to slip. As Madame Arrestal turned and caught her, she struck her foot against a sharp rock, ripping her shoe and tearing a heavy callus almost off her toe. She gasped in pain and sank down beside the path. Typham put her arms around her mother. Oh, Mama, Mama, dear Mama, I should have given you my charm. I would have slipped anyway, my dear. Are we close to the mission? Oh, Mama, we can't go there. The missionaries will hurt us. The spirits will be very angry. And father won't like it. We must go, Madame Arrestal said firmly. The wind and the rain will come strong again. And we have to stay overnight. We may have to. Mama, please don't. Typham pleaded with her mother. <clears throat> As her mother started on, Typham followed, clutching her charm. When they reached the mission, as the thunder crashed and the rain poured down, Madame Arresto pounded on the door of the nearest building. In a moment, a man opened the door. You know who it was? It was Victor at the door. Oh my, were they in shock. He was not dead. <clears throat> 
Come in, come in, he said in a big, cheerful voice. <clears throat> come, come close to the fire, he said to Tai Pham. He looked at her carefully. Why, aren't you the girl who sold me the sweet potatoes at the market last week? Yes, and Mama bought me a new dress, and, and Tai Pham's voice faded away. We heard your story. I liked what you said about your God. And when I told my husband, arrest all the witch doctor, he put a voodoo curse on you. You will die, Tai Pham said, trembling. And we shouldn't be here. The spirits will be angry and the missionaries will hurt us. No, Mr. and Mrs. Turnbull will not hurt you. They have been helping to get food ready for anyone who needs it. I started to fall, and Mama caught me, but she hurt her toe, said Tai Pham. Let me see, Victor said, and he knelt to look at the sore toe, and he went. He got up and went quickly to the door. I'll get Granny Holdem, and she'll take care of you. When he was gone, Tai Pham looked around the room. Her eyes stopped on something familiar. It was the board on legs that she had seen at the market when Victor told the story about witch doctors. And then she saw a black book on the shelf and she caught her garlic charm and she turned away. Granny Holdeman came and Victor too. And Victor said, here's Granny Holdeman. She's Mrs. Turnbull's mother and she will help you. This hard rain is flooding the basement of a other building, so the turnballs need me there. And the door slammed shut after Victor. Little girl, said Granny, while I bathe and fix your mother's foot, would you read out loud from the book on the shelf? It's God's word, the Bible. Ooh, Kai Pham said, I don't know how to read. I'm afraid of that black book. It tells a wonderful story, dear. It tells about a man who loved and helped people. And one day there was a little boy with a high fever. And this man spoke and the fever was gone and the boy was well. And at other times he made lame people walk and blind people see. I don't believe it. My father is a witch doctor and he cannot do that, Tai Pham said. This man is different, answered Granny. He was God himself. Tell me about him, said Madame Arresto, leaning forward. Granny finished the bandage, and taking the book, she stood beside Madame Arresto. And when Granny started to read, Tai Pham put her fingers in her ears. She walked over to the window and she would not listen. She was frightened. How could her mother listen to words from the black book? Tai Pham heard the name Jesus several times and she put her fingers in her ears tighter. And then she heard Granny say, You must stay here tonight. The mats are in the hall. I'll get them for you. No! Tai Pham ran to the door and tried to go out but the wind forced her back into the room. We must stay, said mother. We will start early in the morning. <clears throat> All through the night, Tai Pham tossed and turned, and at the crash of thunder, she sat upright. The spirits were very angry with them for staying here. Oh my, poor little Tai Pham is scared to death, isn't she? This storm sounds really bad. How are Madame Arrestal and Tai Pham going to get home? We'll find out next time. Be sure to tell your friends about watching Tai Pham on YouTube, Sue Hange. They can find it. Well, have you ever wondered what God might want you to do? Isn't it wonderful that Granny Holdeman, even though she's older, she was willing to go to Haiti and help her daughter and son-in-law in the mission field. Maybe God would want you to be a missionary one day. <clears throat> be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. 
Be it in the town or country, on the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. So be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time to lose. So be a missionary. God's own emissary. Be a missionary today. Well, I hope you'll keep your heart tender and open to what God would want you to do.